Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube's supposed to notify you when I'm uploading a new video. If you're interested in following me on social media, those links are in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today I am bringing to you a Bleak to Chic DIY, and this is an item that I found at the Dollar Tree. It's not really too, too bleak, but it's something that maybe you're not gonna pick up because you're not in need of it. Today I'm gonna be turning this Hawaiian garland from bleak to something so farmhouse chic I can hardly stand it. The outcome of this DIY turned out gorgeous. It superseded what I had saw in my head and I was so stinking excited at the outcome once I was done with it and I put it up. I can't wait to bring you this DIY. This is a quick, easy DIY and just about everything you need for it, you can get at the Dollar Tree. And so let's jump into it and let me show you how I turned this Hawaiian garland from Hawaiian into something farmhouse chic. You're gonna love this. For this DIY, I'll be using just one of these Hawaiian garlands. This is a seasonal item that comes out at the Dollar Tree just about every summer. They had several different styles. It really doesn't matter what style you pick. This is a seven foot long garland. I'm gonna start off by disassembling the banner and all these Hawaiian embellishments, I won't be using them. So I'm gonna put them in my stash and maybe in a future DIY, I might be able to use them. For today's DIY, we'll just be utilizing the pennant part of the banner and the twine. I'm gonna remove all of the letters from these pennants and I found an easy way to do that is just to pop them in your oven at 135 degrees for just a couple of minutes. It softens up that hot glue and the letters just kind of lift up all by themselves. And just like that, you can see it's really easy to lift off the letters. There might be a little bit of excess glue left over. It'll rub off real easily, no worries. If you try to peel the letters off, you end up with some of the paper stuck to where the hot glue was because the hot glue doesn't really wanna come off of the burlap. If you've got a blow dryer or a heat gun, that'll work too. I just like to stick it in the oven because I can multitask and do more than just one thing while it's doing what I need it to do. For this next step, I'll be using two pieces of felt. I'm gonna fold my felt in half. I've chosen kind of a beige tan felt, one that goes with the burlap. By folding it in half, I'm gonna use my pennant as a template and I'm gonna place it on top and I'm gonna cut around it, giving me two more felt pennants. I'm doing this because the burlap pennants that the Dollar Tree has, they're a bit flimsy, they're a bit see-through. I wanted it to be a bit thicker and a bit more sturdy. And so by using two pieces of felt that you can get for 20 or 23 cents a piece, that's gonna achieve what I need it to do. You're also gonna need to cut along that one side of the felt where you folded it to give you two separate pieces. I'm gonna repeat this process with the second piece of felt because I need four total felt pennants to go in back of the burlap ones from the Dollar Tree. To adhere the felt to the burlap, I'll be using this spray adhesive by Scotch. This is one that I got at Joann's using my 50% off coupon. I paid $2.50 for it. Dollar Tree now carries a newer spray adhesive that I think is pretty decent. I tried it a couple weeks ago and I was pretty happy with it. Overall, using spray adhesive is the easiest way to do this because if you do use hot glue, the hot glue is gonna show through the burlap. It's gonna be bumpy. It's not gonna adhere completely to the felt throughout the whole piece of the pennant and that's what we want. I did notice that after I put the burlap on top of the felt that not all of the pennants were identical in size. So I did have to do some trimming of the excess felt that was on here. Here at the top where the holes are, I'm just gonna use my scissors and cut a couple of slits in the felt just so I'll be able to run the twine back through. Using a hole punch doesn't work with felt, at least any of the hole punches that I have. I did try it. So just using some scissors, you don't need to make it a hole. Just by cutting some slits in there, you'll be able to feed the twine right through it. 
For the lettering of this banner, I'll be using this letter template by Waverly. You can get these at Walmart for $4.96. They come in different styles, different sizes. And the color for my lettering that I'll be using today is Waverly's chalk paint in the color of ivory, along with this sponge applicator. I find that if you use a sponge applicator when applying paint to fabric or whatever it is that you're applying it to using these letter templates, it really makes it a lot easier to apply the paint. You really don't get as much bleedage and seepage under the template itself when using a sponge applicator. You just really need to kind of make sure that you don't put too much paint on the applicator itself. I found that when you use a paintbrush, you really get more seepage and bleedage because you have less control over where the bristles go and they seem to go under the template a lot easier without you even noticing. And so like I say, my preference is to use these sponge applicators. You can get a multi-pack at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. The one I'm using today is by Waverly and I believe I got a three pack for a couple of dollars at Walmart. For this DIY, I'll be spelling out the word home putting one letter on each pennant. Because I'm impatient, I don't wait for the paint to dry before I remove the template. Once I remove it, I'm gonna take a paintbrush and I'm gonna fill in all of the gaps in the letters from the template. And again, for this DIY, I will be using these aluminum garden flowers that the Dollar Tree is now carrying. This is a seasonal item as well. I picked up several of these because I love them and I wanted to be able to use them in some upcoming DIYs like today. I'm gonna remove the chain and the welcome sign from the flowers. Using, again, some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of ivory. And I'm gonna give both flowers a good base coat of this paint. I didn't show it, but the center petals to this flower here, I bent them in because this is aluminum they bend in very easily and I just kind of like the look of bending them in I feel like it gives it more dimension and character once I get the base coat on this I like to stick my DIYs if they fit in the oven I set my oven to 135 degrees I put my items on a cookie sheet and really they are dry in like four or five minutes and it saves me a lot of time I can keep moving on with the DIY and to me, it's a win-win. I ended up giving these two coats of paint because the teal was really coming through the ivory. Now I'm gonna take Waverly's chalk paint in the color of hazelnut and I'm gonna give these a real light brush stroke over the petals. I'm not looking for full coverage. This is very similar to a bride dress stroke, only it's not. I'm putting minimal paint on the tip of my brush and I'm just gonna brush over the petals lightly. I love the rustic look that this gives items when you use this technique and so that's why I'm using it on these flowers today. I like the ivory coming through and like I said before, I really like dimension and so this adds a bit more dimension. For the center of my flower, I'll be using this antique wax paint by Waverly. I needed a dark brown paint and this is the only one that I had on hand, so it's gonna work. This is one of those DIYs that really can be made to suit any decor style just by changing up the color, maybe adding some bling or rhinestones or pearls to it. I'm going with the decor style that suits my decor, the color scheme that works with the decor of my home. This could be made in bright, vibrant colors. This could be made in just about any style you want it to be. And so, like I said, I'm gonna do both of my flowers, the center of them with this brown. I'm not looking for full coverage, just kind of lightly brushing it just to give it that darkened look for the center of the flower. I wasn't much liking how these center petals just really stood out. They're just really stark and too clean looking. So I decided to go back in with the hazelnut paint and just kind of do the tips of them just to blend it in. And as you can see, I did take that antique Waverly wax paint and I did go outside of that center petal just to bring out that dark a little bit more. And so I'm gonna leave just a little bit of the ivory showing, but I wanted the tips just to be a bit more rustic and not so sharp and clean. 
I decided that I was gonna add a few of my twine flowers to this. I made three of them. If you have not seen my tutorial on how to make these quick and easy to do twine flowers, I'll link that video in the description box below. If you're having trouble getting the description box to actually drop down because of the hashtags, if you just tap on the title of the video itself instead of the arrow off to the side, the description box will drop down. On the tips of my twine flowers, I decided to add just a touch of the antique wax paint to them because I didn't want these flowers to blend in with the burlap pennants that are gonna be on this banner. I didn't want it all blending in together. Like I've been saying in this DIY, I want dimension and you can add dimension to items just by simply adding a bit of color to the tips or to the center. And so for this, I'm gonna add some paint to the outside tips of these flowers and it's gonna do just what I need it to do and add some dimension to these flowers. For the center of my flower, I'll be using these wood buttons that I got from Michaels. I got these for under $2 using a 40 or 50% off coupon. I believe 100 come in this pack. And I figured, you know what, instead of buying several different colored buttons, I'm gonna buy this pack for $2. There's 100 in here. And whenever I need a button, I can paint it to suit that specific DIY instead of investing in several different color buttons. It is my favorite part of every DIY. The time when we get to put this together, all of our hard work, and we get to see the outcome of our project. I'm going to start off by placing all of the burlap pennants onto the twine just by stringing them through. I actually really like the fact that the felt didn't have holes in it, that it just had slits because you don't have that gaping hole where the letter is. It actually filled it in and the twine just kind of fed through it nicely. And so I'm really happy with the way that ended up working out. Once I get all of my letters on, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hot glue my twine flowers, the three twine flowers that I made in between each of the letters. I'm not gonna do it on the outsides of the H and the E because that's where I'm gonna string the aluminum flowers that we painted. On the back of the garland, I decided just to kind of tack down the twine to each of the pennants and the flower just to keep everything from moving up and down the twine. I already knew that I had it centered perfectly and so I just didn't want to worry about having to move everything and keep it in place. And so just by tacking it down a bit, it's going to make life easier and it's not going to move around and it's going to stay in place. Now I tell you, these flowers are perfect for this DIY because they came equipped with the two holes where the chains were. And so this is perfect for me to feed the twine through to add them to this garland. And so these flowers are gonna go in the front by the H and at the end by the E. And would you just look there? We took a Hawaiian party garland from bleak to something farmhouse chic for under five dollars i love the outcome of this and what's great about things like this that you find at the dollar tree is if you just repurpose them you can save yourself a lot of money because look we just got four burlap pennants for a dollar at the dollar tree and look at what we turned it into how pretty is this garland? I am so stinking excited and happy with the way it turned out. It worked perfectly on my plantation shutters where I had envisioned it going. I think it's a perfect piece. From here on out, you're gonna see it in back of me because this is where I really wanted it to kind of fill in the area behind me, but I didn't wanna put it there before this video because I didn't want you to see the outcome of it. I hope you all enjoyed today's video, turning this Hawaiian garland from something Hawaiian bleak to something farmhouse chic for just a few dollars and a little bit of DIY. Please give this video a thumbs up and let's get this video to 6,000 likes because each and every one of those thumbs up, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day, happy crafting on a budget, and bye for now, everybody.